At Home in North Branch by Arletta Richardson Chapter 15 Back to Normal Stella Brewer took her children and returned to her family home. No one was really sorry to see them go, although I grieved over Daisy. I can't help but wonder what the future holds for that child, I said. She seems to have inherited all the conniving spirit of her father without the winning personality that goes with it. I wish I could have done more to help her. You don't know what your influence may have accomplished in these few months, Sarah Jane said. Not much, if her actions are any indication, I replied. But I'm going to pray that something will stay with her that will change her life. Daniel was delirious with joy over Daisy's departure. When he revealed to his parents some of the things he had endured, they were amazed. He showed more restraint than I ever would have, Jerome said ruefully. I never went around hitting girls, but I'm afraid I might have made an exception in her case. The tentative approach of spring lifted our spirits considerably. The snow began to thaw, and little rivulets of water ran from the school roof and down the rutted roads. The ice on the river cracked and groaned, and every once in a while a sharp report would sound through the woods as a piece broke free and made its rushing way toward Lake Huron. Ma says she'll be able to set her plants out in a few days, Teddy Sawyer announced. Just as soon as the ground thaws a little deeper, she'll start digging. I was eager to start digging, too, and Len promised to cultivate the garden just as soon as he could. A lot of snow still lay in the sheltered areas of the wood, and a thin layer of ice covered the river in the mornings. By the time our third anniversary arrived, I knew that I would not be teaching in the fall. Len was delighted with the news. Our own family at last, he exclaimed. That's the best anniversary present we could have. I hope Sarah Jane won't feel bad, I said. Her baby would have been about three months old by this time. She doesn't talk about it, but I know she hasn't forgotten. I needn't have worried. Not only was she pleased, she was ready to supervise the whole project. It's a good thing you couldn't get your garden in early, she said. Yours and mine together will be just about what you put up last summer. I'll see that you don't work too hard at it. If we have a hot summer, you'll need all the rest you can get. Just let me manage things. I've heard that before, I said with a grin. How about going to town to buy some flannel for gowns? This baby will be born before the last of November and it will be cold again. Let's go. I'd offer to let you have the ones we made last year, but I'm hoping to use those myself before too long. As we walked out to get the horse and buggy, Sarah Jane stopped and gazed at Lilac. What is that cow doing? Getting a drink out of my rain barrel. She prefers soft water to what comes out of the pump. Len even braced the barrel so she won't tip it over and get her feet wet. I certainly hope you don't spoil your child as badly as you have that cow, Sarah Jane remarked. And I hope you've put that you in the masculine singular. I retorted. That animal is Len's pride and joy, but she's no pet of mine. She condescends to let me live in the house, and that's about the extent of it. Dorcas Gage beamed as she measured out the flannel. Are you going to tell the children before the school is out? She asked. Yes, I think so, I said. Although everyone in town is going to know before then, so it probably won't be necessary. You know, I'm really going to miss all of them. I'm glad I'm not leaving town. I want to watch them grow up. While we were looking around, Rebecca Handy came into the store, smiling happily. Mr. Grayson has given Lorenzo a job, she told us. He can work at the lumber mill until the shingle mill is built. We told Becky how glad we were for her and Lorenzo. She looked serious for a moment, then said, For a while that night, I was quite uneasy in my mind. There are people in town who felt that Mr. Brewer ought not to have hired Lorenzo. They suppose that since he can't hear or speak, he doesn't think, either. I feared they would suspect that he had something to do with the tragedy. But now they have taken his testimony and Roland Brewer isn't denying any of it. He'd better not, Sarah Jane said. There's no one who would believe him instead of Lorenzo. 
He was surprised that Lorenzo could repeat what he said when he couldn't even hear him, Rebecca chuckled. I guess he didn't know that there are other ways to keep up with the world than hearing it. She looked serious. Lorenzo isn't sure, but he thinks Elizabeth told her father she wouldn't help him. He knows they argued about it while he was in the office. I wish she would come back. I'm sure Mr. Grayson would listen to her story. I wish she'd come back too, I said. Her mother needs her especially, and we haven't finished a conversation we began the day she left. May was such a delightful change after our long, hard winter that I had a problem controlling the children's exuberance. We spent a lot of time outside looking for wildflowers, identifying different kinds of fern, and collecting new leaves for our nature table. As a homemaking project, we planted a small garden with a row for each child to grow what he wanted. I cautioned them unless they planted something quick to come up, they would be caring for it long into the summer. Things like green onions, radishes, lettuce, and peas would come up before school was out. Most of the children opted for fast results, but Joel insisted on pumpkins and Daniel had his heart set on watermelon. They were given outside rows. One fine afternoon, we spent in town sketching the new buildings that were going up. Pa and George are working on the hotel now that the church roof is fixed, Jamie told us proudly. It's going to be the tallest building in North Branch, four whole stories high. They can't do them any higher than that or they'd topple over, Toby added. Pa says it's worse than working on a barn roof. Is he scared? Teddy wanted to know. Nah, Toby replied. Not my pa. I'm going to be a builder when I grow up. I wouldn't be scared if they put up five or six stories. There was some discussion about the improbability of that ever happening, but Toby was not to be discouraged. His drawing of the hotel included the six floors that he dreamed of. In our outdoor ramblings, we stayed a healthy distance from the river. The combination of melting snow and ice and the spring rains had turned it into a raging, whirling body of water. When we were in the house, Len and I had difficulty hearing each other unless we were in the same room. Aren't you afraid that it will go over its banks? Sarah Jane asked as we watched it from the window one day. I know the house is high, but your garden could certainly be flooded. You wouldn't need to water for the rest of the summer. No one can remember the Chippewa ever flooding, I said. It has crested a few times, but it's never overflown. No one can remember half the town being burned to the ground either, Sarah Jane replied. But it happened. I'd hardly call that an act of God, I protested. Not like a tornado or a thunderstorm or something. Anything that happens is an act of God, isn't it? Sarah Jane persisted. He can stop it or let it occur just as he pleases. She looked out the window again. So why does he let it happen? I knew she wasn't thinking about the river. Suddenly, a scene from our childhood flashed through my mind. Sarah Jane, do you remember when Miss Gibson had us learn a chapter of the Bible for a prize at school? Whatever made you think of that? She asked, raising her eyebrows. Mabel, is your mind wandering again? My mind never wanders, I said firmly. It may jump around a bit, but it doesn't wander. I was considering your question about why God lets things happen. Do you remember the chapter I learned? Yes, the trees of the fields clapped their hands. I also remember that I won the Bible. I ignored that. My chapter was Isaiah 55, and a verse in there says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. In other words, God knows more than we do. I won't argue with that, so what's your sermon? If God knows what's good for us, he won't send something that isn't good for us. Ma always says that we aren't promised fair, just the strength to face what comes. Sarah Jane was silent for a moment. You're right, Mabel. If we're going to believe anything the Bible says about God, we have to believe it all. It would be nice to know why sometimes, though, wouldn't it? Maybe we will, someday. I sighed. Sometimes I think I know more now than I can take care of. On Saturday, we awakened to hear the rain pounding on the roof and lashing the windows. Len had agreed to go with his father to take care of some business in town. I'm glad I'm not going with you today, I said as he came in with an armful of wood. 
This fire will feel good today, even if it is near the end of May. I'll be happy to stay out of the weather. I was going to walk over to Paws, Len said. But since you aren't likely to go out, I'll take Regal. By the middle of the morning, the bread was set and I had a chicken pie ready to go into the oven. The rain continued to descend in great torrents and I was thankful for a snug, warm home. Over the pounding of the rain, I could still hear the roar of the river, though I couldn't see it from the window when I stopped to look out. I did, however, observe that Lilac had come through the gate and was standing in the yard. If she wants to stand out there in all that water, she's welcome to it, I muttered to myself and went back to my work. I couldn't concentrate, though, and kept returning to the window to see where she was. If that cow didn't have the sense to stay away from the river's edge, it could well be the end of her. The last time I looked, she wasn't in sight. I knew that no matter what I put on, I would be soaked if I went outside to find her. I also knew how bad Len would feel if anything happened to her. Reluctantly, I collected rain boots, a slicker, and a scarf for my head. I could dry my clothes and my hair better than I could explain to Len how Lilac happened to be at the bottom of the Chippewa River. I let myself out into the downpour and looked around, hoping that she had turned and gone back to the field. All I would have to do was run out and put the chain across the gate. I should have known better. Several yards from the house I spotted Lilac standing with her back to me, morosely staring at the river. Stupid cow, I thought, as I sloshed through the grass toward her. She'll never find her way back to the field. As long as I was out, and as wet as I was ever going to be, I might as well take her back where she belonged and try to secure her in the pasture. Because of the roar of the water, Lilac didn't hear me until I was almost even with her. One look convinced her that this was not her beloved Len coming to rub her ears, but that other person who usually whacked her rump. She took off at a gallop straight for the river. I watched with horror as the soggy edge gave way and Lilac splashed into the swirling water head first. After a moment of frantic paddling, she turned and tried to scramble up the bank. No matter what my opinion of her personality, I couldn't let the animal drown. I didn't know how I thought I could haul a kicking cow that outweighed me by several hundred pounds out of a swift-moving river, but I had to try. I grabbed a low-hanging branch with one hand and reached out to seize her head. By this time, she was willing to let me get hold of her, but the wet ground would not hold two of us. Before I could find another place to put my feet, both of us were flailing in the water. I clung desperately to her neck while the current tugged at my skirts and my boots filled and became heavier. Lilac slipped and slid along the edge, unable to shake me off or make any headway of her own. The thought went through my head that Len soon wouldn't have a wife, a baby, or a cow if the Lord didn't intervene. I began to shout for help, though I knew no one in his right mind would be strolling by the river on a day like this. Suddenly, I heard a voice. Hold on, Mabel! I'm coming! Don't let go! It was Elizabeth Lawton. End of chapter 15